On the ninth day of the ninth month of the first year of the Xingguan era, the divine capital Woyang was bathed in radiant sunshine and the sky was clear for miles. The state of Li Tang, which had been trembling under stormy weathers, finally collapsed. At the age of 67, under the collective petition of her ministers, Wu Zetian welcomed the moment of defying fate and ascended to the throne. During the coronation ceremony, the empress, dressed in the imperial robes and crown, proclaimed a general amnesty from atop the gate of the heavenly succession. She changed the Tang dynasty to the Zhou, established her capital in Luoyang, and designated Emperor Li Dan as her successor with the surname Wu, thus becoming the only female emperor in Chinese history. In this video, let's follow the chronological order to see how Wu Zetian rose from a talented lady to the throne of the Empress. Family Background Family Background in Early Life Wu Zetian, originally named Wu Mei, was the only female emperor in Chinese history. Her story begins in the late Tang Dynasty where the social conditions and political background profoundly influenced her rise to power. Wu Zetian was born into a distinguished family. Her father, Wu Shirwei, was a founding contributor of the Tang Dynasty, and her mother, Yang, hailed from the imperial family of the preceding Sui Dynasty. Her family was originally from Wenshui County in Bingzhou, now Beishu Village, Wenshui County, Shashi province. Wu Zetian was born in the seventh year of the Wuda era, 624 AD, in Lizhou, present-day Guangyuan, Sichuan province, although there are claims she was born in Chang'an, present-day Xi'an, Shashi province. She had two half-brothers, Wu Yuanqing and Wu Yuanchuang, and two sisters, one of whom was Lady Han, Wu Shun, though there is some debate regarding her historical status, and the other was Lady Guo. Wu Shirwei engaged in the timber trade and was well off. In the final years of Emperor Yang's reign, Li Yuan, Emperor Gaozu of Tang, stayed with the Wu family multiple times while in Hedong, thus becoming acquainted with them. After Li Yuan raised an army against the Sui dynasty in Tai Yuan, the Wu family provided him with considerable financial and material support. Following the establishment of the Tang Dynasty, Wu Shirwei, as a founding contributor, was appointed as the Minister of Works and the Military Governor of Jingzhou, and was ennobled as the Duke of Ai. Therefore, according to Bai Shuyi in the General History of China, Wu Zetian did not come from a common landlord and bureaucratic family, but rather from a newly elevated aristocratic bureaucratic family. Arise from the ranks of the landed gentry. After Wu Sherwei passed away in the ninth year of the Xingguan era, 635 AD, Wu Zetian was only 12 years old. Her cousins, Wu Wei Ong, Wu Huayin, and Wu Yuanchuang, took advantage of the situation and were disrespectful to her mother, Lady Yang. Soon after, Wu Zetian and her mother moved from Jingzhou back to Chang'an to live. Entering the court for the first time In the 11th month of the 11th year of the Xingguan era, 637 AD, after Emperor Taizong of Tang arrived at the Luoyang Palace, Ziwei City, he heard of the 14-year-old Wu Zetian's beauty and summoned her to the palace. She was appointed as a fifth-rank talent and given the name Wu Mei, which was later mispronounced as Wu Mania. Before entering the palace, Wu Zetian bid farewell to her widowed mother, Lady Yang, saying, To serve the sagacious and enlightened emperor, how can this be anything but fortunate? Why then do you weep and behave like a child? Historical records do not provide detailed descriptions of Wu Zetian's life in the palace during Emperor Li Shimin's reign, with only a recollection from Wu Zetian in her later years about taming a horse for Emperor Li Shimin. The emperor had a horse named Lion Mei, which was robust and willful, and no one could tame it. Wu Zetian, who was in attendance, told Emperor Li Shimin, 
I can subdue it, but I need three things, an iron whip, an iron rod, and a dagger. I will whip it with the iron whip, and if it does not submit, I will strike its head with the iron rod. If it still does not submit, then I will cut its throat with the dagger. Li Shimon, after hearing this, greatly praised Wu Zetian's resolve. However, Wu Zetian did not receive Li Shimin's favor and remained a talent for 12 years, with her status never being elevated. But during Li Shimin's illness, Wu Zetian and Crown Prince Li Zhi began to establish a bond. In the 23rd year of the Xinguan era, 649 AD, Emperor Li Shimin passed away. Following tradition, Wu Zetian, along with other childless consorts, entered the Ganya Temple in Chang'an to become a Buddhist nun. However, she maintained a continuous secret connection with the newly enthroned Emperor Gaozong, Li Zhi. In the first year of the Yongwe era, 650 AD, in May, Li Zhi visited Ganya Temple to offer prayers on the first anniversary of Emperor Li Shimin's death, where he encountered Wu Zetian once again. The two recognized each other and shared their feelings of longing since their separation. Wang, the empress who had fallen out of favor due to not having children, witnessed their meeting and took the initiative to request Li Zhi to bring Wu Zetian into the palace, hoping to use this to counter her rival consort Xiao. Li Zhi had already intended to do so and immediately agreed. In May of the second year of the Yongwe era, 651 AD, Emperor Li Zhi's mourning period had ended and Wu Zetian once again entered the palace. Before her return, Wu Zetian was already pregnant and gave birth to a son, Li Hong, after entering the palace. Upon her return to the palace, Wu Zetian quickly surpassed consort Xiao Shufei in favor and gained the affection of Li Zhi. By May of the following year, 652 AD, Wu Zetian was honored with the title of Zhaoyi, a second-rank consort. At that time, Queen Wan and consort Xiao Shufei often competed with her for the emperor's favor, slandering each other, but Li Zhi did not believe any of the rumors. Emperor Li Zhi ending his mourning period, joyful palace celebrations, traditional Tang Dynasty festivities, Yongwe second year. Wu Zetian was cunning and ruthless, and also well-versed in literature and history. In the fifth year of the Yongwe era, 654 AD, Wu Zetian gave birth to her eldest daughter, Princess Ending Si. According to the New Book of Tang and the Zizhi Tang Jian, about a month after the birth of Princess Ending Si, Queen Wang came to visit showing affection and playfully engaging with the princess. After Queen Wang left, Wu Zetian, seizing the opportunity when no one was present, strangled the girl to death and then covered her with a blanket to conceal the act. Just then, Emperor Li Zhi arrived. Wu Zetian pretended to be joyful and uncovered the blanket to look at the child together with him, only to discover that her daughter was already dead. Wu Zetian burst into tears. When asked what happened, those around her said, the queen has just been here. Li Zhi flew into a rage, exclaiming, the queen killed my daughter. Wu Zetian then tearfully recounted Queen Wang's alleged crimes. Unable to clear herself, Queen Wang fell from grace, leading Li Zhi to contemplate her deposition in favor of Wu Zetian. However, this account is controversial the Old Book of Tang and Tang Hui Yao, written during the Five Dynasties period, only record the sudden death of the princess without specifying the cause. In June of the sixth year of Yongwe, 655, there were rumors in the harem that Queen Wang and her mother Lu were practicing the art of hating victory. When Li Zhi learned about it, he was furious and drove Lu out of the palace. He also wanted to remove Wu Zetian from jail. Eugene was granted the title of First Great Chen Fei, but due to the opposition of the Prime Ministers Han Yuan and Lai Ji, it was not possible in the end. At that time, 
The court's senior ministers headed by Chang Sun Wuji and Chu Sui Liang were powerful, and Li Ji's power was greatly restricted. Many ministers, headed by Chang Sun Wuji, opposed Tang Gaozong's decision to abolish the king and establish Wu, and Wu Zetian's path forward was therefore full of hardships. Li Ji attempted to revive the imperial power by deposing the king and establishing military power and attack the power of the elder ministers. As a result, Wu Zetian began to become Li Ji's political comrade in arms. Before long, the imperial secretary Li Yifu became the first to openly support the Depose Wang and Establish Wu campaign. He received great rewards from Li Ji and Wu Zetian for his support. Seeing the profitability of supporting the movement, many mid-level officials also shifted their support in favor of establishing Wu Zetian as the empress. Ministers such as Su Jingzong, Shui Yixuan, and Yuan Gongyu all petitioned Li Ji to make Wu Zetian the empress. Observing that many supported the idea, Li Ji's intention to depose and establish a new empress was rekindled. Li Ji, a veteran and meritorious statesman, said, This is His Majesty's family affair. Why ask outsiders? This statement profoundly influenced Li Ji and turned the tide in his and Wu Zetian's favor regarding the issue of deposing the empress. Li Ji's wise counsel, standing firmly with Emperor Li Ji in the imperial study, a single lantern illuminating the strategic discourse, ancient Tang Dynasty. Finally, on the 13th day of October of the same year, Li Ji issued an imperial edict under the charge of plotting with witchcraft, Empress Wang and consort Xiao Shufei were demoted to commoners and imprisoned. Their parents, brothers, and other relatives were also stripped of their titles, removed from office, and exiled to Ling'an. Seven days later, Li Ji issued another decree, establishing Wu Zetian as the empress. At the same time, he demoted Chancellor Chu Suiyong who had been the most vigorous opponent of the movement, to the position of military governor in an outlying state. In April of the fourth year of the Xianqing era, 659 AD, Wu Zetian and Emperor Gaozong of Tang reached a consensus. They stripped Chak Sun Wuji, Yu Jining, Han Yuan, Lai Ji, and others of their posts and exiled them from the capital. With this action, Li Ji essentially achieved centralized monarchical power. The deposed Wang and established Wu incident dealt a heavy blow to the Guanlong nobility, changing the situation of weakened imperial power that had persisted since the Wei, Jin, Southern, and Northern dynasties. And it had a profound impact on Chinese history. In October of the fifth year of the Skinching era, 660 AD, Emperor Li Ji suffered an attack of cerebrovascular disease, which caused dizziness and blurred vision, preventing him from handling state affairs. Consequently, he allowed Wu Zetian to manage the court politics. However, this situation also led to a rift between Wu Zetian and Li Ji, which nearly resulted in Wu Zetian being deposed. In the first month of the first year of the Longshua era 661 AD, Wu Zetian proposed a ban on women performing as comic actors, referring to those who played in humorous performances, which Emperor Li Ji accepted and decreed. In April, Emperor Li Ji wanted to personally lead a campaign against Goguryeo, but he abandoned the plan after persuasion from Wu Zetian and his ministers. Initially, Wu Zetian was able to humble herself and endure humiliation, complying with the emperor's wishes, which is why Emperor Gaozong, despite many objections, insisted on making her the empress. However, once Wu Zetian gained power, she monopolized authority and power, often restraining the emperor's will with her own, which greatly frustrated Emperor Gaozong. In the first year of the Linda era, 664 AD, Chancellor Shangguan requested to depose the Empress, 
and Emperor Gaozong agreed, commanding Shang Wan Yi to draft an edict for the deposition. Attendants promptly informed Wu Zetian of this development. Wu Zetian immediately presented herself before Emperor Gaozong and pleaded her case. After listening to her, Emperor Gaozong felt ashamed and could not bear to proceed and treated her as before. He also worried about Wu Zetian's resentment and thus deceived her by saying, I never had such an intention, it was all Shang Wan Yi's idea. From then on, whenever Emperor Gaozong conducted state affairs, Wu Zetian would listen behind the curtain, being informed of all political matters, great and small. The supreme power of the realm was entirely in the hands of the central palace, and promotions, demotions, life, and death were decided by her word. During the reign of Emperor Li Shi, when the national strength was prosperous, Wu Zetian actively encouraged Li Shi to perform the Foshan rites, imperial sacrifices and offerings at Mount Tai. During the sacrifices to the supreme deity of the heavens, the deceased emperor was to be included, and during the sacrifices to the earthly deities, the empress dowager was to be included. Initially, the emperor was to offer the first sacrifice, followed by the ministers. However, since the Foshan rites did not traditionally involve the empress, Wu Zetian argued that since the rites were sacrifices to the earth, it would be appropriate for the Empress Dowager to be involved to highlight the virtue of the Earth Goddess. She also contended that it was inappropriate for the ministers to offer the second sacrifice, given the distinction between the genders and that external ministers should not conduct the sacrifices. Therefore, she proposed that she herself act as the one to offer the second sacrifice to honor her mother-in-law, and Li Ji agreed. Consequently, in October of the second year of the Linda era, 665 AD, Emperor Gaozong, accompanied by civil and military officials and a ceremonial entourage, and Empress Wu, accompanied by noble women from both inside and outside the palace, set out from the eastern capital Ziwei city towards Mount Tai for the Foshan Rites. The procession of carriages and attendants stretched for hundreds of miles, and accompanying them were envoys and leaders from various nations, including the Turks, Khotan, Persia, India, Japan, Silla, Beach, and Goguryeo. In April of the third year of the Xianhang era, 672 AD, Wu Zetian commissioned the carving of the Lushina, Virokana, Buddha, and the Longmen grottos near Luoyang, according to her own likeness at the cost of 20,000 guan for cosmetic powders. This project took three years and nine months to complete. In the first year of the Shang Yuan era 674 AD, Li Shi declared himself Tian Huang, Heavenly Emperor, and Wu Zetian declared herself Tian Ho, Heavenly Empress. Ostensibly to avoid the titles of the previous Emperor and Empress, but actually to elevate their own status. In December, Wu Zetian proposed 12 policies. 1. Encourage agriculture and sericulture, lighten taxes and corvée. 2. Grant tax and corvée exemption to the three auxiliary regions around the capital, Chang'an. 3. Rest the troops and civilize the world with morality. 4. Prohibit frivolous craftsmanship in the southern and northern government-run workshops. 5. Reduce laborious and costly projects. 6. Encourage freedom of speech. 7. Suppress slander. 8. Have all officials from the rank of princes and dukes downward study the Tao Te Ching by Laozi. 9. When a father dies, wear mourning clothes for the mother for three years, previously it was one year. 10. For officials who have already received their appointment documents before the Shang Yuan era, there shall be no retrospective investigations. 11. Increase the stipends for officials of the capital of the 8th rank and above. 12. 
For officials who have served in their positions for a long time, and whose talents exceed their ranks, they should be promoted and their stagnation addressed. Emperor Li Ji adopted all of these proposals, promulgating and implementing them through imperial decrees. Wu Zetian placed great importance on agricultural production. She stipulated that within the jurisdictions of each state and county, households with surplus grain due to the expansion and cultivation of fields were to be rewarded. Those whose governance was harsh and excessive, leading to the migration of the population, were to be punished. The agricultural treatise she compiled, Zhaoren Binyi, was distributed throughout the empire and had a significant impact. During her administration, Wu Zetian's religious policy was characterized by a reverence for Buddhism. In the second year of the Shang Yuan era, 675 AD, Emperor Li Ji's cerebrovascular disease worsened. He discussed with his ministers the possibility of Wu Zetian taking over the regency. Chancellor Hao Chujun remonstrated, saying, How can your majesty consider handing over the empire of Gaozu and Taizong, not to your descendants, but to the empress? This caused Li Ji to temporarily halt the discussions. Upon learning of this, Wu Zetian summoned a large group of scholars and engaged in extensive literary work, successively producing texts such as Xian Lan, Gu Jin Nei Fan, Qing Gong Ji Yao, Xiaoyang Zheng Fan, Wei Cheng Dian Sen, Zi Xu Yao Lu, Feng Lu Xian Jia, Xiao Zi Zhuan, Lian Vi Zhuan, Nei Fan Yao Lu, Yu Xu Yao Lu, Bai Liao Xian Jia, Zhao Ren Bin Yi, Chen Gui, and others. She also secretly ordered these scholars to participate in the court's deliberations, effectively diluting the power of the chancellors. These scholars came to be known as the Northern Gate Scholars. In the same year, Crown Prince Li Hong passed away, and Li Xi subsequently appointed his second son with Wu Zetian, Li Xian, as the new Crown Prince. In the second year of the Diao Lu era, 680 AD, Li Xian was deposed as crown prince and demoted to commoner status on charges of plotting treason. He was then exiled to Bas Ho. As a result, Emperor Li Ji established Wu Zetian's third son, Li Xian, as the new crown prince. In the second year of the Yongchun era, 683 AD, Emperor Li Ji moved to the Fengdian Palace. After Wu Zetian's successful Foshan ceremony at Mount Tai, she persuaded Li Ji to hold a similar ceremony at Mount Song, the central sacred mountain. However, due to his illness, Li Ji was unable to proceed with the plan. Shortly after, Li Ji appointed his son Li Xian to oversee state affairs with assistance from chancellors such as Pei Yin, Lu Qixian, and Guo Zhenyi. After returning from Fengdian Palace to the eastern capital, Li Ji's illness worsened to the point where ministers below the rank of chancellor could not be granted an audience. In December of the same year, Emperor Li Ji passed away in the Xinguan Hall of the Ziwei Palace. His last will stipulated that Crown Prince Li Xian should ascend to the throne in front of his coffin and in case of any major state affairs that could not be decided, they should be determined by the Empress Dowager, Wu Zetian. For days later, Li Xian ascended the throne as Emperor Zhangzong of Tang and honored Wu Zetian as the Empress Dowager. The Empress Dowager assumes power. In February of the first year of the Xingxing era, 684 AD, Li Xian planned to appoint the father of Empress Wei, Wei Xuanqing, as the privy counselor. Chancellor Pei Yin strongly remonstrated against this. Li Xian, angered, retorted, Even if I were to give the entire empire to Wei Xuanqing, what would be the problem? Why fuss over a mere privy counselor? Wu Zetian used this as a pretext to depose Li Xian, demoting him to the title of Prince of Luling and exiling him to Fajo. She then installed her fourth son, Prince Dan of Yu, 
the Dan as the emperor, who became known as Emperor Ruizong of Tang. Wu Zetian took over the administration, presiding over the court and monopolizing state affairs. In September, Wu Zetian initiated a new era named Guangzhai, renamed the eastern capital to Shindu, indicating that Luoyang was to be the capital. At the same time, she changed the colors and names of flags, official attire, and government offices, and granted the palace the name Taichu Palace. In the same month, Su Jingye and others raised troops in Yangzhou in support of the deposed prince of Luling, Li Xian, gathering an army of a hundred thousand within just over ten days. Wu Zetian promptly appointed Li Xiaoyi, the great general of the left jade seal, as the grand commander for the Yangzhou region, leading an army of three hundred thousand to suppress the rebellion. In November, Su Jingye's forces were defeated, and he took his own life. In March of the second year of the Chuegong era, 686 AD, Wu Zetian ordered the creation of bronze boxes, small bronze containers, to be placed in front of the Ziyun city in Luoyang, to accept memorials and petitions from her subjects at any time. Additionally, she widely opened the doors to secret accusations, stipulating that anyone could inform on others. Informants were provided with transportation, horses, and food by the state. Even farmers and woodcutters were personally received by Wu Zetian. If the information provided was in line with her wishes, the informant could be exceptionally promoted. Furthermore, even if the accusations were not factual, the informant would not be punished. At the same time, Wu Zetian appointed a group of notorious officials such as Sua Yuanli, Zhou Xing, Lai Junchen, and Ho Siji to manage the prisons. Once accused, prisoners faced brutal interrogations using various forms of torture, and very few survived their incarceration. With the rise of this culture of informing and the harsh methods of these officials, the number of people tortured to death increased. As a result, a climate of political terror took hold within and outside the court, to the extent that ministers would bid farewell to their families before attending court sessions, living in constant fear for their lives. To reward informers, Wu Zetian broke protocol and appointed them to official positions. In that year, Wu Zetian issued an edict to execute Liying, the Prince of Nanan, and eleven other members of the imperial clan. Additionally, she ordered the whipping to death of the two sons of the former crown prince Li Xian. The royal family of the Tang dynasty was nearly annihilated by these killings, and those few who were young and weak and managed to survive were exiled to the Ling'an region. Wu Zetian's actions in seeking to seize the Tang dynasty's foundations and eliminate the imperial clan caused unrest among the various princes, who considered taking up arms in opposition. Before they could reach a consensus, Li Chong, the governor of Boazhou and prince of Langyi, rose in rebellion in Boazhou, present-day northeast of Liaoqing, Shandong, in August of the fourth year of the Chuegong era, 688 AD. In response, Li Jin, the governor of Yuzhou and prince of Yu, also rebelled in Yuzhou, present-day Runan, Hunan, to support Li Chong. Wu Zetian dispatched Chiu Xinji and Wei Chongyu to suppress the uprisings. Li Chong's rebellion was defeated within seven days, resulting in his death. In September, after his forces were defeated, Li Jin committed suicide. Wu Zetian, intent on eliminating all the princes of the Li family, had Zhou Xing and others conduct interrogations. They coerced Prince Hanli Yuanjia, Prince Luli Lingkue, Duke Huang Wuli Zuan, Duke Ding Wanli Rong, Princess Changle, and others into committing suicide. The confidants of these royals were also killed. This further illustrates the ruthlessness with which Wu Zetian consolidated her power and eliminated threats to her rule. In the same year, Wu Zetian ordered Shui Huai, a favored court eunuch, 
to oversee the completion of the Ming'ang, a ceremonial hall that had been constructed in Ziyun City. She named it the Wanshang Shengong Hall of the Myriad Manifestations and allowed the public to enter and visit. She also commanded Shui Huai to cast a giant statue, so large that even the little finger could accommodate dozens of people. A five-story tall structure called Tian Tang Heavenly Hall was erected to the north of the Mingang to house the enormous statue. This was part of her effort to demonstrate her power and the grandeur of her reign. The construction of the palace was so expensive that it was measured in the trillions, depleting the government's finances. Wu Zetian's nephew, Wu Qingxi, ordered someone to carve white stones with the inscription, The Holy Mother graces the people, the imperial enterprise will flourish forever. He claimed to have found these stones in the Luo River and presented them to Wu Zetian, who was greatly pleased. She named the stone Bao Tu Precious Map. Afterward, Wu Zetian bestowed upon herself the honorific title Shen Mu Shen Wang, Holy Mother Divine Emperor, during the Empress years. In the first year of the Zaichu era, 690 AD, in September, the imperial censor Fu Yui led more than 900 people from Guangzhou to Shindu, the divine capital, to present a petition asking Wu Zetian to change the state's name to Zhou and grant her the imperial surname Wu. Wu Zetian initially did not approve. Consequently, officials, royal relatives, leaders of various ethnic groups, Buddhist monks, Taoist priests, and over 60,000 people from near and far jointly submitted petitions requesting this change. Emperor Ruizong also personally requested to be granted the surname Wu. Not long after, the ministers reported that a phoenix was seen at the Shangyang Palace, and a red sparrow appeared at the court hall, which were considered auspicious omens. Wu Zetian then approved the request. On the ninth day of the ninth month, she ascended to the Zetian Gate Tower, declared a general amnesty throughout the country, changed the Tang Dynasty to the Zhou Dynasty, and initiated the Tian Shou era. In the same month, on the day of Iyo, she granted herself the imperial title of Xing Shen Huang Di, Holy Divine Emperor, with the Emperor Ruizong designated as the imperial heir and bestowed with the Wu surname. On the day of Bingxu, she also established the seven temples of the Wu family in the divine capital. In the second year of the Tian Shou era, 691 AD, in July, F.A. Ming and others composed the Great Cloud Sutra in four volumes. It proclaimed that Wu Zetian was the incarnation of Mithraya Buddha, descended to earth and ought to be regarded as the sovereign of all under heaven. Wu Zetian ordered that this text be distributed throughout the land. She commanded that a great cloud monastery be established in each of the two capitals and various states to house the Great Cloud Sutra. Monks were instructed to lecture on it, and through such actions, she elevated Buddhism's status above that of Taoism. In the first year of the Rui era, 692 AD, in February, over 10,000 members of the Tuyuhan and Xianbei tribes pledged allegiance to the Wuzhou dynasty, and Wu Zetian organized them into 10 states. In May, the leader of the Tibetan tribe, Hsu, also led his people to request submission to Wu Zetian, who dispatched Zhang Xuanyu with 20,000 elite troops to greet them. However, Hsu's plans were leaked, and he was captured by his people. At the same time, the Chang chieftain Zan Chui led over 8,000 people to surrender. Zhang Xuanyu settled their tribe in the newly established Lichuan state. Despite her advanced age, Wu Zetian was skilled in the use of makeup and often appeared radiant and youthful. Even her attendants and those close to her could not sense her aging. In the first year of the Changshou era, 692 AD, in September, Wu Zetian dispatched the general Wang Xiaojie and Ashina Zhong to lead an expedition to the northwest, 
In October, Wang Xiaojie achieved a major victory over the Tibetan Empire, recapturing the four garrisons of Chiozi, Kucha, Shul, Kashgar, Yinchi, Karashar, and Suyab, establishing the Protectorate General to pacify the West at Chiozi. Despite unanimous opposition from her ministers, Wu Zetian resolutely reinforced the four garrisons with an additional 30,000 troops. This move ensured the stability of the Anxi region, which remained secure until the time of Emperor Xuanzong of Tang, without further disturbances. In the second year of the Changshou era, 693 AD, in January, Wu Zetian personally presided over a sacrificial ceremony in the Divine Empyrean Palace and created a courtly music and dance performance called Divine Empyrean Grand Music, for which he selected 900 dancers. In the same month, Wu Zetian, heeding slanderous accusations, executed Crown Princely Dan's consort, Lady Lu, and virtuous consort Do. Li Dan himself narrowly escaped false charges and potential disaster. Moreover, his son, Prince Li Qingqi, and other royals such as Prince Li Qingyi of Hung were demoted to the rank of Dukes of Commanderies. In September, Wu Zetian assumed the additional title Emperor of the Golden Wheel and Divine Sanctity, and crafted objects such as a golden wheel and a white elephant, which were among the seven treasures. Shortly thereafter, she posthumously honored her great-grandfather, grandfather, and father with new noble titles. In the third year of the Changshou era, 694 AD, in January, Wu Zetian sent General Li Duozhua to defeat the rebellious Shiwei. In February, she dispatched Wang Xiaojie to defeat the forces of the Tibetan Bad Paliwa Zanren and the Turkic Kagan Bugu each amounting to over 30,000 men. Han Sijong, the defender of Sueya, defeated over 10,000 men of Ziyanchuo's Nishichiji. In August, Prince Liang Wu Sansi led chieftains of the four barbarian tribes in requesting permission to cast a celestial pivot out of bronze and iron to be placed outside the gate of imperial supremacy to sing the praises of Wu Zetian's virtues. The nobility and rulers of various nations pooled together hundreds of billions of money to buy up all the bronze and iron available. Once completed, the names of civil and military officials and heads of states of myriad nations were inscribed on the column, and Wu Zetian personally inscribed, Great Zhou's celestial pivot of myriad nations a claim of virtue, symbolizing the Wu Zhou. The Zhou dynasty established by Wu Zetian was the central pivot and supreme ruler of all nations. In the first month of the first year of Zhongxing 695 AD, on the first day, Wu Zetian adopted the title Empress Saint of the Golden Wheel who surpasses the ancient sages. On the night of the 16th day, one of her favorites, Xue Huai, feeling disgruntled, secretly set fire to the heavenly hall, which spread to the Hall of Light. By morning, both halls were destroyed. Wu Zetian decreed that the Hall of Light be rebuilt, and the original site of the Heavenly Hall was to be converted into the Buddha Light Monastery. In the same month, Wu Zetian sent Wang Xiaojie on a campaign against the Turks. In October, the Khagan of the Turks, Machwa, sent envoys to request surrender, which greatly pleased Wu Zetian. Consequently, in the twelfth month of that same year, Wu Zetian departed from the divine capital, ascended Mount Song, performed a ceremonial offering at the sacred mountain, issued a general amnesty, and changed the era name to Wanzwe De Fong, meaning Long Live the Ascension. In March of the first year of Wanzwe De Fong 696, Wu Zetian completed the reconstruction of the Ming Egg which was named Tongdian Palace, and the era was changed to Wanzwe Tongdian. In May, the governor of Songma and the Khitan of Ingzhou, Li Jinzhong, and the prefect of Gichengzhu, Sun Wanrong, raised troops in rebellion, captured Ingzhou, and killed the governor Zhao Wenhui. 
Wu Zetian dispatched generals Chao Renxia, Zhang Xuanxiu, Li Duozhuo, and others to lead troops to suppress the rebellion. However, Chao Renjie and his forces were ambushed by the Khitan, leading to the annihilation of their army. Following this, the Wu family again sent Wu Yui, Wang Xiaojie, and others to lead troops to quell the revolt, but they were also heavily defeated. In April of the second year of Wanzhui Tong Tian 697, Wu Zetian had nine tripods cast and dragged from the Xuanwu Gate into the Ziwei city. She ordered the chancellors, princes, and more than 100,000 guards from the southern and northern Ya administrative divisions, along with the ceremonial oxen and white elephants from the palace, to pull the tripods together. Wu Zetian also composed the song of dragging the tripod for them to sing in response to one another. Eventually, the tripods representing the nine provinces were arranged according to their respective directions within the hall of the Mingang. In the same month, Wu Zetian dispatched Wu Yizong, Lu Shurda, and Sha Zha Zhongyi to lead an army of 200,000 to campaign against Sun Wanrong and his faction. By June, Sun Wanrong's forces were defeated and he was killed, with the remnants surrendering to the Turks. That same year, the notorious official Lai Junshin wanted to entrap the princes of the Wu family in princess typing. He also sought to falsely accuse Li Dan and Li Xian of conspiring with the guards of the southern and northern near to rebel, intending to capture them all at once. The Wu family princes and princess Taiping, all greatly frightened, united to expose his crimes, resulting in his imprisonment and execution by the most severe punishment. His enemies competed to consume his flesh, and in a short while, nothing was left. Lai Junshin was cruel, cunning, greedy, and violent, ensnaring the innocent in his web and crafting accusations of rebellion, leading to countless unjust deaths. With corruption as vast as a mountain and wronged souls blocking the roads, even Wu Zetian knew of the widespread resentment. She ordered a recounting of his crimes and confiscated his family's wealth. In the first year of the Xingli era, 698, Wu Qingxi and Wu Sanxi schemed to be named crown prince, repeatedly sending people to say to Wu Zetian since ancient times. There has never been a precedent for an emperor to designate someone of a different surname as his heir. Wu Zetian, hesitant and undecided, heard the advice of Chancellor Di Renjie, who said to Empress Wu, which is closer, the relationship between an aunt and a nephew or between a mother and a son, Wu Chengxi and Wu Sanxi were Wu Zetian's nephews. Wali Xian and Li Dan were her sons. If your majesty appoints your son, then for thousands of autumns to come, he will be worshipped in the ancestral temple. If you appoint your nephew, there has never been heard of a nephew becoming an emperor and then enshrining his aunt in the ancestral temple. He also advised Wu Zetian to recall Li Xian. After this incident, Wu Zetian had no intention of appointing Wu Qingxi or Wu Sanxi as crown prince and secretly brought Li Xian back to Luoyang. The officials serving in the Crane Control Agency, including Ji Su, Zhang Yiji, and Zhang Changzong, had all requested Wu Zetian to appoint Li Xian as the heir apparent and even the crown prince, Li Dan, had offered to abdicate in favor of Li Xian. Under the pressure of widespread support for the Li Tang royal family from all quarters, Wu Zetian further realized that the will of the people was with the Li Tang royal lineage. If she continued to act against this sentiment, she risked losing the people's support. Later, during a military conscription, initially, there were no volunteers to enlist, but when it was heard that the crown prince was taking charge, the northern suburbs and the hills were swarming with soldiers, leaving no room for others. This incident further demonstrated that the Li Tang was the people's choice. After weighing various factors, Wu Zetian ultimately decided to appoint Li Xian as the crown prince. 
abdicated and died. After resolving the issue of succession, Wu Zetian, feeling accomplished and also advancing in age, began to indulge in pleasure, undertaking extensive construction of palaces and Buddhist temples. Wu Zetian's favorites, the brothers Zhang Yiji and Zhang Changzong, were young and beautiful, often adorned with rouge and dressed in extravagant clothes. Wu Qingxi, Wu Sanxi, and others vied to curry favor with them, even to the point of holding their whips and leading their horses. By this time, Wu Zetian had entered her twilight years and, plagued by illness, was often unable to attend court, leading to a decline in her control over state affairs. She relied on the Zhang brothers as her informants. Zhang Yiji and Zhang Changzong gradually began to interfere in state affairs and orchestrated the downfall of Chancellor Wei Yuanzhou. This not only brought them into conflict with other high officials, but also reversed the momentum of Wu Zetian's return to the Li Tang dynasty and the succession of the crown prince, complicating the political situation. The relationship between mother and son, as well as that between ruler and subjects, became unprecedentedly tense as a result. According to historical records, Wu Zetian's granddaughter, Princess Yongtai, was framed and executed for discussing the Zhang brothers with her husband Wu Yinji and princely Chongran. In the first month of the Xinglong era, 705, Wu Zetian became gravely ill, confined to her bed in the Yingxing Palace, attended only by the Zhang brothers, Yiji and Changzhou. The Chancellor Zhang Jianji, Chui Xianwei, along with high officials Jing Hui, Wan Yinfan, and Yuan Shuqi, colluded with the commander of the Imperial Guards, Li Duozhua, falsely claiming that the Zhang brothers were plotting a rebellion. They then launched a coup d'etat, leading over 500 Imperial Guards to storm into the Ziwei city, killed the Zhang brothers, and subsequently surrounded the Jixian Hall where Wu Zetian resided, demanding her abdication. Forced by the circumstances, Wu Zetian abdicated the throne in favor of the crown prince, Li Xian, and was then moved to live in the Shangyang Palace. After Li Xian was reinstated, he led the officials to the Guanfing Hall to inquire about Wu Zetian's well-being, thereafter visiting every 10 days. He also conferred upon Wu Zetian the honorific title of Zetian Dashing Huangdi thus bringing the Zhou dynasty to an end. In the second month, the Tang dynasty was restored, with all officials, banners, attire, and writing systems reverting to the old ways, and the divine capital was once again called the Eastern Capital. According to records, in her later years, Wu Zetian was adept at making herself up, and even with her children and grandchildren around her, her age did not show. However, after her abdication and move to Shangyang Palace, she no longer dressed up and her appearance became haggard. On one occasion, when Li Xin came to see Wu Zetian, he was shocked by her appearance. Wu Zetian wept and said, when I brought you back from fangling to the divine capital, it was indeed to entrust the empire to you. But the five traitors, those involved in the Shenlong coup, sought their own achievements and startled me into this state. After hearing this, Li Xian was so overcome with grief that he knelt on the ground and wept profusely, thanking her for sparing his life. It is thought that it was because of this event that Wu Sanxi and other members of the Wu clan were still able to participate in state affairs, thus Sanxi and others were able to enter into her schemes. On the 26th day of the 11th month in the first year of the Xinlong era, December 16, 705, Wu Zetian passed away in the Xianju Hall of the Shangyang Palace at the age of 82. Her will decreed the omission of the imperial title, posthumously naming her Zetian Dashing Empress, and pardoned the families of Empress Wang and Consort Xiao, as well as the relatives of Chu Sui Long, Han Yuan, and Lu Shua, 
In the second year of Shenlong 706, in May, she was buried alongside Emperor Gaozong in the Qianling Mausoleum. Today, we revisited how Wu Zetian re-entered the palace in 651 AD and was honored as Zhaoyi in 652 AD, marking her ascension in the power struggle of the Tang Dynasty. The story of Wu Zetian is not just about the struggle for power, but also a display of wisdom and strategy. Her historical status has always been a hot topic among scholars and history enthusiasts. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't hesitate to like and comment. Sharing your views on Wu Zetian or discussing other historical figures you find fascinating. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss our latest videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.